All right, let's talk Mega Millions, shall we? Ticket machines are sure going to be getting a workout during the uh, next 10 hours or so. Maybe you've heard about the game of chance. The jackpot has just been upped to $636 million. Up for grabs tonight. <laughs> All right, jackpot is now the second largest trailing a $656 million mega pot. That was back in March of 2012. If someone wins and picks the $316 million cash, op cash option, you will be richer than Beyonce, who you just saw there. The odds of winning, though, lower than ever. Just one in 259 million. <laughs> That's your shot. So why? Mega Millions has recently changed the rules here. Five of the six balls used to range from 1 to 56. They now go from 1 to 75. So productivity with all of us thinking Mega Millions may take a little bit of a hit today. A lot of us are doing a little daydreaming. And wouldn't it be nice to be a Mega Millions jackpot winner? So what happens if it is you? Joining us now for some insight and analysis into preparing yourself for victory is Justin Halverson from Great Waters Financial. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Are you dreaming? Well, I don't know. I think planning is a better option than dreaming, but dreaming never hurts. Okay, let's talk about all of us that are out there getting in on office pools, pooling our money, going out to buy a ticket. What's the first thing you do when you buy a ticket? Because we all think we're going to win. <laughs> well, I think the best advice would be to sign the back of that ticket immediately. Right away? Why? Well, if you end up winning, you're going to need to sign it anyway. And so if you have it signed up front, that way your name is on the back of that ticket. If you misplace it, you've got your name on the ticket. Okay. On top of that, it's a good idea to make a photocopy of the ticket, especially if you're in an office pool. Is it kind of silly, though, because you're, like, planning super early for this, so the drawing hasn't even happened, and all of a sudden you're doing all of these things? Well, it never hurts. I mean, if you're going to do it, why not expect to win? I guess. I guess you're <laughs> right. Okay, so let's say you do win. What's the first thing you do? Well, I think the first thing should be to create a plan. Establish a team of professionals that you can trust to get around you to help create a plan that will let this money last the rest of your life and beyond. Uh, the first big decision you have to make is do you take the lump sum payment or the 29-year uh, annuity payment over time? And what do you do? Well, I'd say uh, consult with your CPA and tax professional because it's a big tax implication one way or the other. Right. So get the facts so you can make the best decision. Okay. Good advice. What, what do you do if, if you win? I mean, I think everyone says the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to quit my job. I'm not even going to give two <clears> weeks notice. I don't know. I think the best advice would be to just take six months and don't make any big, crazy decisions. Continue to work? Well... I would advise that. Really? I mean, if it's $600 million, I guess maybe you don't need to. But if you take some time to just plan for six months, get your plan in place, you won't end up like one of the 70% of lottery winners that end up with nothing in just a few short years. So this really? way you can create a plan, create a budget, stick to it, and make this money last the rest Even of your life. Even if you were the dumbest person out there, could you really lose $300 million in the lifetime? It's could happened. You? It's happened. There's, <laughs> it's documented. <laughs> All right. What, is there any downside to winning? You wouldn't think so, would you? No. No, there is. I think the biggest one is publicity. Uh, yeah. In Minnesota, you turn in your name, the amount of money you won, and your address. So people are going to know who you are and where you are. They're coming out of the woodworks to find you. You'll have some new friends. Your new and best friends. Maybe some new enemies. Probably so. Let's talk about this, though, because a lot of people say, you know what, I'm not going to spend the money. Let's be realistic. Let me, let me put my money where it really is truly going to work for me. Is there an area, would you tell people, maybe take your $5 you're going to spend on the jackpot and put it elsewhere? Well, I think so. I mean, you know, the, the payoff, if that, that $5 investment, if you win, is going to end up being a lot more than you'd get by saving it. Right. But the odds are more in your favor by taking that money along with your retirement planning dollars and put them to work for you for the long haul. If you can invest that money 20, 30 years down the road, that is going to be uh, a much better, there'd be much better odds of having a secure retirement than hoping on the lottery. It's not nearly as fantasy, though. No, it's not. It's so much more practical. Well, I think that's what we should plan for is Are practical. you getting in on the fever, though? Come on. I never have. Never? I never have. I say put the odds in our own favor and wow. work hard, make good decisions, and I think we can you know, all put the odds in our own favor that way. Your office doesn't have a pool? Maybe they do, but I'm not in it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Justin, thank you so much. We appreciate your advice. I think you, with baby five on the way, you need to get in on that office pool. You never well, know. think about it, Megan. Today may be your lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> we will, by the way, put a link to Justin's website on our website if you have any questions. You can also head to our website, ksdp.com, to see this interview again. It's all there in the interactive web center.